think you played? Uh, oh, yeah. this was. Yeah, towards the line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think overall it was a pretty solid day. Um, obviously still room for improvement. Um, but overall pleased. You always you don't you don't want to have a, a bad game because you think about it all summer, all fall. But uh, I think it was pretty solid. But uh, like I said, always room for improvement. <laughs> You talked about dual threat versus pocket passer kind of thing, but Coach Hampton's made it clear that you know, the quarterback run game will be a part of his offense. How do you think that that works? Um, obviously, uh, uh, a couple designed quarterback runs today um, with basically just a box count with a draw um, and the looks were there to run it. So uh, when, when we call a run play, going to try to go get it. Uh, obviously, uh, Really pleased with the guys on the perimeter as well. Um, but when Coach Hamden, if, if he calls my number, if it's a read game, um, obviously if it's all even, I'm going to hand it off to the dudes that came here to run the ball on the perimeter. But uh, other than that, if it's there, then I, I'm going to try to go take it and get it. Defenders ever complain about that in this kind of format? Uh, oh, with this stuff? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so today, like, basically, uh, was everyone wasn't live, so uh, it was kind of the same, but uh, you, you get a little bit of that treatment in some of those live scrimmages, like, oh, man, I, I'd have had you here, and oh, man, I'd have broke that tackle, and uh, me and Chip are going back and forth talking about if we'd have scored or not on a couple of our runs, but, uh, I mean, it, that's all up in the air. Um, <clears throat> we had a couple guys out on, on both sides of the ball, so I, I think it was really smart that we were able to stay up today. Mark, what, what, what's the summer going to be like for you? What, what do you want to concentrate before fall starts? Uh, so the summer for me uh, in the offense base will be uh, being able to take a step back. So uh, if you think about it, we had Coach Hammond come in, and it was just it was wheels on the ground rolling, uh, installing, meeting and stuff. And I feel like I haven't really had a breather since that first day that he came in. And so uh, going into summer and this next week, uh, obviously tweak some things, do some corrections. But uh, after that, being able to take a step back and uh, see, see things that are looking good, see things that need to be cleaned up, obviously. But uh, basically just an overview and uh, fine-tuning some things. Some stuff's looking really good. Some stuff's looking not so good um, on my part. Uh, but other than that, uh, basically just a, a big overview of what we need to work on and how we can work on that and uh, things that, things that we're going we're gonna to try to pride ourselves on, making sure that we run those plays perfectly. And uh, being able to do that this summer and going into fall will be really exciting. Coach said that Cutter's probably a little frustrated with him for the way that he ended practice. What do you kind of say to a, a young guy who – Maybe makes a mistake in a game like this or a practice like this. Uh, basically, for uh, what I was thinking about, and I told him about it a little bit after was, dude, like you've had a great spring. Like uh, you can't let one play define you, and uh, you'll be. He'll be thinking about it. If, he, if he's anything like me, he'll be rerunning in his mind 50 times, thinking about what he could have done better if he was if he was late, if he was faster, if it was the ball placement, anything like that. But uh, he's had a great spring, and uh, you can't really beat yourself up on one play. Uh, there at the end, they were kind of just airing it out, and sometimes that happens whenever uh, the DB obviously made a good play, and, um, and 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 it's just good football players out there. So Cutter, he's had a great spring. Uh, wouldn't let he had a great spring game today. Wouldn't let one play to find him, and uh, made sure to let him know that after. Yeah, we saw you the. Design on this part, but what's going through your mind when you're rolling out, uh, kind of like on that play we had A.B. downfield? Uh, so basically, that was uh, okay. Crazy enough, the that was the first time like all spring I haven't like had that I had a problem with the the listening to the stuff. <laughs> so I thought they said. I'm not going to say the terms, but yeah. two of the terms obviously ended with OP. Okay, so I was like, I thought it was one play, but it was really the other. So when I saw Barryon turn around, I said, oh, my gosh, like, what in the heck? So, like, I was like, dang, Barryon didn't run the right route. I heard the, I heard the wrong thing. So I just had to extend the play, make AB, uh, obviously turn around, catch the ball. And uh, it's good work, being able to work scramble drill with those guys because, uh, I mean, any time you can get 20 guys, uh, obviously – to the left of the hash or whatever like that was, and you're creating one-on-ones with one of your dynamic wideouts on the on the outside. That's that's a win for the offense. Uh, I just got to do a good job of putting the ball in their hands. Talk about the pitch-to-pitch ball, you know, like key and needle and things like that. Talk, talk about how those tough cases where they you see those tough cases you like that. Oh yeah, yes sir. Uh, it's it's really uh, it's really good to be able to see that from the guys. Um, obviously, Dan had a great one today uh, with Dan and Barry on and Dingle and, and most of those guys that were out there. Uh, uh, I think those are more than 50-50s for the offense. So uh, you're throwing to Dan. You're, you're trying to put anywhere near him because that dude, he's going to go get the ball. And uh, made a great play today, getting both the feet in and a good catch. And uh, like I said, just just put anywhere near him and they'll do the rest. Rob, Rob said he was happy with the pace of this offense. You pointed out before you've run this quite a bit in terms of no huddle and all. How did that feel to you? 
the pace today? Oh, the pace is pretty smooth today. Um, obviously, this is our first, or I mean, not our first, but like second or third of the spring of, of this guy. And you got to keep in mind, most of the guys that are in our room have, have huddled after every play and stuff. They've never really looked at signals. They've listened to the full call in the huddle. They've clapped. They've jogged up to the line. So uh, just, I mean, it went a lot smoother than I really thought today um, because uh, as I was talking to some of y'all last Saturday, last Saturday I uh, wasn't really happy with the pace of play. Um, on my part, uh, I, I didn't have a great day. And I think that whenever – Whenever I'm, I'm able to take control and, and get guys lined up, uh, we're able to play a lot faster, which is obviously an advantage to the offense. So uh, I thought today was a lot smoother in terms of pace of play. Um, obviously, with, with subs and stuff like that, the defense, they, they'll be able to sub. But if, if we don't sub, we're, we're trying to run the play. Like If the D-line D don't have their hand in the ground, that's on them because uh, we don't got to wait on them. But other than that, I, I would say it was pretty solid with the pace of play. Rock, how much is your approach being here at Kentucky, having just this leadership role? How much is your just approach to the game? How much has it changed, or if at all, just now that you're in, just like this bigger change with it? Um. I wouldn't say it's changed too much because I don't really see my guy or see myself as a big rah rah guy. Uh, I'm a guy that's uh, obviously referring back to my my buddy uh, Brock Bowers. Obviously, he's he he didn't say a word, and and obviously like you go in, you do your job. People people know the time you put in. They see that. They respect that, and they trust that you're going to go make plays on Saturday. Obviously, though, being a quarterback, you have to be a little more vocal. So, uh, being able to to be a little more vocal with the guys and uh, just just keep on demanding the standard that we have set on offense already. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't say coming out of my shell, but but being more vocal with those guys, and uh, then then carrying carrying out my fakes, stuff like that, watching extra film. Like it, it's e it's easier to follow a guy when you know that they've put in the work, and I'm gonna make sure I do my job. Obviously, have have done a pretty good job this spring, but going into the summer and fall, uh, just meeting with those guys, me watching film, me doing my part. Mark said he thought the routine plays looked pretty routine in the past game. How, how much of this offense is just taking what the defense gives you? Uh, yes, sir. So basically, it's that's that's how that's how I see the quarterback position in, in offense in, in a general is uh, like Tony Romo. Uh, Coach Hamden's told us several times. Tony Romo sees four verts as the running backs play. You're you're spreading everybody out, and you got a one on one with your running back and the Mike linebacker. He's got to make him miss. If something presents itself on the perimeter, then obviously you're going to take it. But you're, you're looking you're looking. Hey, I'm, I'm going to take this if it's there and uh, moving the chains and little dinks and dunks like that. That's something where we're going to be perfect at. I'm taking three steps as fast as I can. I'm throwing it to him. That corner might miss the tackle. If not, six yard gain, second and four, second and five, and uh, just being really efficient at some of those plays is something that we really stressed. And uh, Coach Hamden related today's game. And he said he wanted the quarterbacks to come out there and be the most boring golfers ever. Is what he said today. So he said you're going to go out there, you're going to pull out your three wood, and you're going to hit it 200 yards straight down the pipe. You're going to have a great approach shot. And if something, if something uh, uh, like uh, presents itself, then you take it. But if not, you just take what the defense gives you. Brooklyn, spring officially. Does a quarterback need time off, or, or do you pick up like grab the receivers and get back to throwing right away? Um, I'm not sure how. Obviously, uh, Kentucky has done it before with May, but normally May is kind of like a everybody do their own thing. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to take time, go back home, see the family, and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to be throwing six days a week, but obviously I'm not going to take four weeks off. Uh, but being able to go and throw with, with whoever, go train with whoever, and then and come back after May and uh, be ready. Because that, after that June, uh, basically to the season, you have the 4th of July, maybe a couple of days off after camp. But other than that, it's, it's a long ride after that. So May is basically just making sure your body's right, making sure you're coming back right for summer conditioning. And uh, it's more individual stuff. But then in June and July, we'll definitely start amping that stuff up. Growth has been in the spring. Um, kind of goes back to taking what they give you. Uh, I felt like maybe maybe the first couple of days of practice, I'm like, well, dang, like maybe maybe these guys don't think I'm good. Like I'm trying to rip go balls in there. Like no, dude, You're like if the go ball's there, if it presents itself, put it anywhere near those guys are gonna go catch it. But uh, just just taking what they give me. Um, basically, Brad Johnson, he he told me taking the check down, got him a 20 by 40 foot pool in his backyard, and <laughs> and he he played in the league for 15, 16 years. So uh, being able to just do that and be smart with the ball, that's another thing. Is uh, at the quarterback position, you got to be like this right here, and, and it can't be you have great plays and then you have awful plays. You have great. It's got to be just this right here. And man, if something's there, take it. If not, 
find a check down, find the guy that we're trying to get the ball to in the flat. He might make someone miss. If not, then, uh, it, it, like I said, second and five, second and six. Mark, you obviously weren't good the last time Bo was, but he's looked so much improved since the last time we saw him. What's kind of stood out to you uh, with him in the spring? Uh, Bo's definitely had a great spring. I think I think the quarterback room overall has had a, had a pretty solid spring. And uh, some of the stuff uh, Coach Hamden was stressing to us that making sure we all pull from each other because uh, everybody brings something different to the table in the quarterback room. And uh, Bo, he's really mature. Um, we talk to each other about coverages and stuff. It's great being able to trot off the field and say, hey, like, what would you see there? Him do the same to me. And, hey, I saw this. I thought it was a great read. Hey, I thought you might maybe could have done this. Uh, basically, just me and Bo have, have developed a really good relationship this spring. And uh, I believe that's so crucial uh, in the quarterback room is being able to trust uh, those guys. And obviously, at the end of the day, there's competition. There's competition in every position group, but being able to know that that, that guy, he, he wants the best for you deep down, and uh, that's just making sure that we do that, and, and same with Cutter, like Cutter, me and Bo, and, and Ham even have, have had a great uh, spring together, getting to know each other, uh, maybe get to golf a little bit a couple of weeks, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what's coming up, but yeah, Bo, Bo and Cutter and Ham have had a great spring. Mark, you mentioned earlier a problem with the, the year, the new, the new scenario. Just as a quarterback, how different is that, and how, how, how big an adjustment is that just to the just playing the game. Oh uh, yes, sir. It's it's really a huge adjustment, and uh, er, gosh, it's not a huge adjustment. It's 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 a huge positive. Like it's not a big adjustment at all, because you're thinking like when I'm sitting there in my bed or at my desk or something, I'm reading the play. All right, I'm reading it out loud how Coach Hamden would say it, and it's just visualizing it, because. Normally, whenever you're looking over there, you're looking at the signals and stuff. You're visualizing, okay, is this is this is this formation? We're coming with this motion, then we're going to play this. Like, whenever you hear it, you're telling the O line what they need to hear, and then you're processing while everybody else is still looking at the signals. So basically, the quarterback position is able to play a lot faster. And you'll see me lined up sometimes before other guys because I am hearing it. And some of the signalers have the same headset, so they're hearing it at the same time. But then we go formation, motion guy, play direction guy. So. Some of that stuff's a little different, but I, I've loved it so far and uh, haven't had much issues with it at all. And obviously, we'll be able to work out technical difficulties and stuff like that. But uh, really, that one hiccup that we had today, which was my fault. Um, but other than that, I've really enjoyed it. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. you.